but here is a guy who is the leader of the country, and it is. Um, you know that that sort of information in your past would disqualify you from uh, getting, in, uh, you know, government clearance, uh, security clearance in the United States, even if you have a simple affair. With right. a this is adult. a genuine security yeah. risk. If this photo exists, and I, yeah. I stand corrected, of course. The murder of children after raping them by Westminster politicians, of yes. course, is a much more yeah. heinous crime yeah. than the prime minister allegedly having um, consensual or non-consensual oral sex with a dead pig. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the I pig was dead and by the end. He could have choked to death. I mean, he could have been alive when it started. We don't know the details. Uh, isn't this a security risk? In other words, when Jeremy Corman came into power, the conservatives very quickly said, this is a security risk. But if there's a photo floating around of this, it's for blackmail purposes. I would think that that is actually a real security risk, not a fake one that Cameron is talking about in terms of Jeremy Corman. Your thoughts? The prime minister put his thing inside a dead pig. Allegedly. Now, allegedly. According to who? I think it's a... a Lord a, Ashcroft. A, a Lord Ashcroft is, has been told it by somebody, but... You know, if you just just for a moment think about what that... What, what, he put his thing I know, inside... But Mark, is this really inconsistent with the, with the temperament of Westminster? Mouth. Because in the past year... The context of it is, the context of it is, at the same time, Jeremy Corbyn was fighting against apartheid. He was out marching. He was out protesting. There was a, a 20 years they was outside South Africa House. This man was putting his thing inside a dead pig's mouth and talking about hanging Nelson Mandela, who was a terrorist. This is the context, because what they've been doing with Jeremy Corbyn is going back in time. This is a man of peace, a man who, who stood up against... been standing up against war. You know, he, 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 he's anti-nuclear, anti-trident, anti-war. He wants no more pointless wars, anti-austerity. You know, he wants free education, renationalizing railways, energy, not-for-profit homes. They want to destroy him, you know, because he's every, you know, even you know, like this quantitative easing, we called it before, it's like a helicopter dropping money, you know, the famous quote. But to, to even suggest it, you know, someone said to me in Scotland, if Jeremy Corbyn was to get within, within 10% of implementing any of these uh, policies, they would be, the, the, the general yesterday, what did the general? Yeah, let me, let, me, general... let, me, let, me, let me put that in context. So first of all, Jeremy Corbyn, he's just recently <laughs> been elected by a huge 60% mandate to lead the Labour Party. He was a 250 to 1 long shot just a few months ago. People finally have given up. They, they understand that this country has a bunch of inbred, uh, kitty raping, pig uh, sexing, Westminster career psychopaths, and they're worried now because they see the global economy about to crash. They see this global environmental uh, degradation about to wash up on UK shores. They see the global debt markets about to explode, and they're thinking, do we really want a psychotic kitty rapist and pig fiddlers in Number 10 Downing Street? They're saying maybe we should have somebody like a Jeremy Corbyn who seems to be one honest, two intelligent and three forthright unlike the current administration now you mentioned this fella 